but I'm going to take you on a tour of three shopping mall food courts at Icon Siam, MBK Center, and Terminal 21 to find out which one serves the best Thai street food. Right guys, we made it to our first stop on this little tour and it is to the shopping mall called Icon Siam. It is very easy to get to, you just take the BTS to Sapan Taksim. You can then jump on the free riverboat shuttle which will bring you across the river and drop you right at the shopping center. For me, this is the best shopping center in Bangkok and perhaps, it's a big claim, but perhaps even the best shopping center I've been to in the world, but does it have the best street food in a shopping center in Bangkok? Let's go find out. The area you want to head to is on the ground floor. It's actually on the level you come to if you come by boat, but if you come by car or by taxi, you may have to come down to this level. And the first thing to say is it is absolutely stunning. I've actually been to all of the places we're going to see today and by far this is the most beautiful. It's actually set up like a mini floating market and then you have the market stalls around and in between. And if we were giving prizes for beauty, this one definitely takes first place. I've come here early, it's about half 10 and all of them open between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. So <laughs> they do get pretty busy. So I thought I'd try and beat the crowds. At least at this one, we're gonna bump into the crowds later. So it is a little quiet now. But when you come, I presume it'll be lunchtime or evening time, there'll be a real buzz and a real atmosphere here as it's full of people. All right, before we decide what to eat, let's have a look around and just see what's on offer here. There is a huge amount on offer here. I mean, I always end up at the uh, fried pigskin, which is not good for me, but look how good it looks in those huge packs. You've also got Sai Ua, the spicy Thai northern sausage. This is what we ate a lot of in Chiang Mai. We've got corn. Finally, we actually see corn. Remember, we saw so much corn being grown in the northern provinces. I'd never actually seen it being cooked. Got your drink section, obviously. Actually, a lot of them are just setting up. I mean, they've only been open half an hour, but lots of grilled food here. Baby grilled octopus. Got salt crusted grilled fish. They look pretty good. Probably too much for me, I must say. How good does that look? And when it's finished, it looks even better. Gaiyang. Gaiyang. Gaiyang, grilled chicken. Like half a chicken for just 120 baht. I mean, that's a pretty good price. 200 baht for a whole one. Cannot complain at that. Before we carry on, I need some caffeine. No coffee or no tea today, so I've come to this place. And this place is great for Thai tea and Thai coffee, but it also does roti, either sweet roti, or you can have it with curry, actually, um, which looks pretty, pretty good, pretty tasty. I love roti and curry sauce. But let's start off with the tea, and then we'll carry on exploring and find out what we're going to eat. Uh, chai cup. Ah, uh, no, actually, it's okay, it's okay. Just a straw, thank you. Cop and cup. Cop and cup. Okay, caffeine in hand. Just 50 baht for Thai iced tea. Slightly more than the street, but hey. Mm. Very good, and strong, actually. Sometimes they're not so strong. Not too sweet. Nice iced tea. Here we have Mu Ping, which is grilled grilled pork on a skewer, which mu ping, mu ping. Grilled meat on a skewer, very, very tasty. It normally comes with some fresh cabbage and then you have some other, other sausages and chicken on, this, on the skewer too. Again, more sayoa. <clears throat> and then these things I love, it's like different curries and you can choose them on top of rice. And here, the price is actually pretty good. You get 60 baht, sorry, 45 baht for one topping, 60 for two and 70 baht for three, which is amazing, amazing value. And they look amazing. I mean, just how good do those curries look? This is the type of thing I was saying, like this doesn't matter whether it's made here or on the street, it's gonna taste just as good. And the same here. 
which is basically the same concept. You have the different curries that you can choose from, but this time, instead of with rice, it's with kanom jean, which is the fermented white rice noodle. So you place your fermented white rice noodle on the bottom, choose your curry, and we have, looks like we have everything here. Green curry with fish balls, chicken and winter melon, chicken and bamboo, vegetarian, uh, rice noodle, coconut, fish balls. Yeah, you've got everything you'd want here. And then you pile on your veg on top of it. Very healthy, healthy dish. And we even have some chicken feet, which I do love, I must admit. So maybe I think this is the one that we'll try. I haven't had Kao Nan Jim in a while. So maybe this is the one that we'll, we'll try. So Adi Kap. <laughs> Can I have uh, Kanom Jean with the green curry with chicken and winter melon? Please, Kop and Kap. Mayo Kap, Mayo Kap. Kop and Kap. No egg, no egg. <laughs> Just look at that creamy broth. Chicken and winter melon. Trying to get the veg in, you see. Chai cup, cup and cup. And now I need to find a way to pile on the veg. I might leave you to it and I'll come back when I've got the veg because I've only got two hands. Okay, here we are. And it's a much bigger portion than I expected. She gave two large clumps of Canon Jim rice noodles and uh, then, yeah, piled the curry on top and I, I went a little easy with the veg, but I took a selection of everything, cabbage, herbs, uh, some, some greens, and then a sprinkling, a sprinkling of chili, which she was impressed with. <laughs> it looks great, it smells great. <clears throat> Very rich coconutty broth, as I said when she was pouring it. But uh, it's all in the taste right, so let's try it and stop talking about it. Okay, first food of the day and I'm starving. And just to, mention on the price 60 baht it's pretty damn good it's not that far off street food here let's start with a piece of that winter melon mm. wow winter melon doesn't have a huge amount of flavor but what winter melon does do is suck up all of the flavor that it's been cooked in or that it's been sitting in and the sauce, the coconutty, chickeny sauce of that curry has just been absorbed into the winter melon. Very, very delicious. The chicken. Soft, tasty. Can't complain at that. And then those Canon Jean noodles. Okay, there is actually a sourness. I mean, Kanom Jin is normally fermented white rice noodles, but they don't always taste fermented, which is essentially a sour flavor. It doesn't always happen, but these have it, which I like, and I like a lot. And I think it's important to know that they will taste a bit sour if they're fermented, so don't be put off by that. But for Eating in a shopping mall, I would say this is very impressive. And if not on par, almost on par with the Canom Jin that I had in Wan Lang Market when I was with Gary, I would say these are not these are not far off, if not as good. Yeah. Impressive start. The chicken is very tasty. I love chicken in Thailand. The noodles are tasty. The curry is tasty. The soup and the broth is very tasty. Coconutty, bit of spice in there. It's got a nice chicken flavor. But the star of this curry, strangely, is that winter melon. Okay, I'll finish this and then we'll go and grab some more food. If I'm being honest, for the last few weeks I've really been craving dumplings. So I think the snack to go before we head to MBK will be some of these dumplings. And you have three different types. You have pork, pork with shrimp, and then pork with salted eggs. I think we'll just get six, which is 60 baht. 
And uh, I think, can we get three pork with shrimp and two pork with salted eggs, please? Yeah. Uh, chai cap. You want a spicy sauce, huh? Uh, chai cup, chai cup. Have sour. You want sour sauce? Uh, no, spicy is okay. Just spicy, please. And deep fried garlic. Okay, chai. Okay. Kopong kap. Kopong kap. Just a quick snack. To be honest, I could probably make a whole video just in this place. Because so much of the food looks good, but I do want to move on and make that comparison between the two and see which is the best place to get food in the shopping mall. So. As I said, dumplings. Dumplings have been on my mind and I haven't seen many of them in the provinces. So two types, I've got uh, pork and shrimp and then pork and salted egg. And it comes with the crispy fried garlic, which I poured on top, and you get an option of sour or spicy dipping sauce. You can get both, but I just fancy the spicy to be honest. So let's start with one of those pork and shrimp dumplings. Very tasty. Shrimp inside, it's a whole shrimp. Sometimes it's ground up and uh, it's mixed with the pork, but it's the whole shrimp on top, so it's a nice texture. The wrapper is very thin, very light. The whole dumpling is very light. Sometimes they can be a bit heavy, a bit claggy, and you get the crunch. And the flavor from that fried garlic, a slight spicy hit from the, from the sauce. Mm. Very tasty. And this one intrigues me. Pork and salted egg yolk. Maybe we should bite in half and just see what it looks like. Mmm. Look at that. Now that is a tasty dumpling. I think that one is better than the shrimp. I've never had a dumpling with the salted egg inside before. I thought it was going to be a bit, a bit weird. But mm. sixty baht. I come say I'm food court is going to take some beating. Now it's time to head across town and visit the next shopping mall, and that is the MBK Center. Let's see what this food court has to offer. As we have made it to the MBK Center, our second shopping mall stop. And if you're coming here, again, it is very easy. You stop at National Stadium BTS station, and it is right outside. This shopping center is famous for its electronics and its cheap clothes, but it was actually the original shopping center with a food court. So it'll be interesting to see what it's like. We have to head to floor six. So let's go and find some food. Okay, unlike Icom Sam, where you can just pay with cash here, you have to load some cash onto a card and then you pay with the card. Well, actually, I think it's a piece of paper even. So let's do that and then we'll have a look at what's on offer. loaded 100 baht onto a piece of paper and you just get a QR code and scan that and then you get the money back for whatever's left. It's very easy. Let's see what they have. And the first thing to note that jumps out at me is I recognize these places. Not all of them, but wow, look at this duck. Golden, golden duck skin. But this one, Ratna Yacht Pack 40 years, I have eaten at their restaurant. So in Icon Siam, and I, also in Terminal 21, they're not actual street food places, or at least most of them aren't. But here, which is quite cool, is you get to eat 
from famous street food places, but in a more comfortable setting, I guess. Got stewed pork leg again, 65 baht. Same price as Icon Siam. And it looks pretty good, so, sorry. So maybe that, that could be an option. It is peak lunch hour now, so this place is it's pretty busy. More busy than I like filming in front of. I still get nervous. So I don't normally like filming in front of so many people. Got Cow Mangai and Cow Mangai Todd that I actually ate yesterday, so I'm not sure I'll have that again, but it looks nice. Can never go wrong with Cow Mangai. Okay, this duck looks even better than the last one. You've got char sui or red pork there. That looks pretty good. Wow. Actually, I know it's the photo, but that looks pretty tasty. Standard northern Thai dish, khao soy. Of course you have that. Everyone loves khao soy. If you're not going to northern Thailand, you should definitely try khao soy in Bangkok. It might not be quite as good as in Chiang Mai, but still it's something you need to taste. And you've got your standard stir fries like pad krapao, um, pork stir fries with all the veg and the herbs in there. So I guess it's time to make a decision. And it just all looks so good, again. But I think I want to eat the Ratna. I've come to Ratna Yacht Pack 40 years. And as I said, this is a famous restaurant in the Pranakon area near the old city. And I think, can I have number five, please? Fried pork noodle with chicken. Actually, no, pork, pork. Mu, mu. And this is an interesting dish. I've gone for the crispy noodles. You can have it with soft noodles too, but these crispy noodles here. And the pork and the veg will get cooked, of course. It will go on top of the crispy noodles and then they'll pour on this gravy which looks far too thick to be enjoyable and it is something to get used to but trust me it is delicious so i just scan the qr code and they give me a little receipt kopun kap and tells me how much i've got left i would recommend you try this before you start to style it but because i've eaten it before okay know it need some of this chili vinegar so I get a bit of that bit of that in maybe a touch more and then a very small touch of that those dried chili flakes right let's get this to the table and try it stir fried noodles with gravy sauce and just I said it was thick just look at that I mean I hate to use the word snot before I put it in my mouth, but you see what I mean about having to get used to the texture and you kind of just need to get over it because it is so tasty. And what's amazing about it is those noodles, they've been fried in fat, so they're crispy and really crispy, like dried crispy noodles. But then when you add that gravy on top, over time, as it sits in it, it softens and uh, it becomes just as, interesting delicious texture and then obviously in there you've got some you've got some vegetables in there you've got cabbage in there you've got the pork you can have it with chicken if you want and then uh that chili vinegar that i added in too and it really is a unique and delicious dish that if you're not going to go to the restaurant here is a is a great place to try it and you should try it let's give the taste see so if it's as good as the one in the shop because that that will be an interesting comparison and i guess that's what's cool about this place as i said it is the same food that you can get in famous street stores. But is it as good? That gravy, once you get over the texture, it has so much flavor that actually just makes you forget about the texture because it's so good. And being British, we love gravy. And it really has that deep, intense gravy flavor. Obviously thickened with corn flour, which is why it makes it this thick. So it's not that weird if you think about it. It's probably just a, a meat soup or a meat stock which has been thickened with corn flour. But it packs 
the flavour. And those noodles, they're soft on the outside, but there's still a crunch on the inside. So it's very interesting texture. It's not like the normal texture of a noodle that you get, obviously, soft and chewy. And of course the pork, soft, tasty, and then the fresh crunch of those greens. It's a very interesting textural dish. As I say, very unique, you don't normally get those textures in, in a dish in Thailand, but I think once you try this once, you're gonna crave it, you're gonna want it more. You're gonna keep coming back to it because there's nothing else like this. So if you don't want to try it on the street, come to MBK and eat it here. And 75 baht, again, more expensive, of course, but you know, you need to expect that it's going to be more expensive. It's not comparable to the street food because you're on the street, normally on a plastic chair. Here, you've got air conditioning, you've got toilets, you have a nice setting. I wouldn't say this is the most beautiful setting, but you have a better setting than on the street if you're looking for comfort. So you're obviously going to pay more than that. And they have costs which you just don't get on the street. So obviously you can't expect the same price point. You're paying for that comfort. But what I would say is, if you want to try street food and you're a little nervous, starting off in a place like this where you can see an English translation, see what it is that people who are serving speak English, you can have a conversation about it, you can taste it. It's a very easy way into street food. And then the next day when you go to eat street food on the street, you kind of know what you're looking for, you know what you like, and you have a target what, of what you're going for. So if you are nervous about street food, maybe this is a good entry point. Come to one of these shopping malls, find what you like, find what you want, and then go to the street food. Because you have to eat street food when you come to Thailand. I'll admit this, I actually ordered the wrong dish first time, so I ended up with two dishes. Definitely not going to be able to eat all of it. I'll make a, I'll make a stab, but I have stir-fried flat noodle dish with pork from the same place. It's pretty tasty, I must say. And you actually get the flavor of the wok. There's a real smokiness that comes through, actually. But it's flat rice noodles. And that soft pork, and like a salty, sweet sauce with it and then cabbage. It's actually incredibly good. But I think if you're gonna eat a Ratna Yor Pak 40 years, you have to try the fried noodle gravy. Okay guys, I've made it to Terminal 21, what I would say is the most popular food port for tourists. Not necessarily my favorite, but you can find some good food here. But the concept of this uh, shopping mall is quite cool. Each level is based in a different country, so it's set up in a different way. It's themed, essentially. But if you're looking for the food court, you can actually get food in the basement and on the ground floor. But the one you should come to, Pier 21, is on the fifth floor. So that's where we're heading now. Here we are at the Pier 21 food court, and it's set up slightly differently from the others. You have these, I guess, less stalls, but hubs, and each one serves like a different dish. So you have everything here. You have Hainanese chicken, which is cow mingai. You've got pork noodles. You've got Thai basil stir fry. You've got your curries. You've got noodle soups. You've got pad thai khoi tod. You've got everything here again that you can want in a food court, depending on what you fancy. Can I have uh, number five, the beef masaman, and a roti as well, please? Kopun kao.
First up is the beef masaman, and this is the thing I eat every single time in here. It is so good. The chicken one is also good, but the beef one is just next level. And this is as good as anything I've eaten outside of a food court in a, in a shopping mall. But just look at the huge, big chunks of fatty beef. If you don't like fatty meat, I'm sorry, but there is so much flavor in this fat and the beef and that sauce. <laughs> look at the color of it and the, the oil just floating on top of it. You get a couple of chunks of potatoes in there. And normally it just comes with the biryani rice and on top they have some fried shallots. But I also normally ask for a roti on the side, a savory roti, just so I can dip it in that sauce. And that is the finishing touch that you need to this dish. You cannot go wrong ordering this dish in Terminal 21, I promise you. Let's get going. So let's flatten that rice down. Nice bed to get some of this amazing, amazing beef. Just put that on top. and bathe it in some of that sauce. But not too much, remember, you want to keep some for the roti. But definitely need some. It's so good. I'm so, even after eating all that food, I'm excited to eat this again. So yeah, those potatoes on there too. And I'll show you what I like to do with these potatoes. You might think I'm weird. But see if you agree with me. Okay, and then we'll save this to dip the roti into. Let's get into this. It's not the prettiest plate of food, I must admit, but trust me, looks don't matter sometimes when it comes to food. It is all about the taste. So a little bit of that biryani rice, the fried shallots, and this amazing beef. It is so good. The flavor of that beef and the masaman curry. The masaman curry is actually incredibly tasty in itself. But the flavor of that beef comes straight through it. The rice is good too. Very light, very fluffy. The richness you get off that fat. Do not, do not cut the fat off that beef. Of all of the dishes I've eaten in a food court, in a shopping mall in Bangkok, this is the one I think about. And this is the one that I keep coming back to. Terminal 21 might not be my favorite food court, but it definitely has my favorite dish in all of them. Let's give this roti a little dip. Oh, look at that. I've lost it. Right, let's go. Not the best roti I've ever had in my life. But it doesn't really matter. The sauce is so good. And it has that beefiness in it that even just dipping a average roti into it is so tasty and the rest of the dish makes up for it i would order a roti maybe i'm just being a piggy but rice and roti is the way to go i think and it's only an extra 15 baht on top of the 50 baht for the beef masaman so i mean you're not breaking the bank by ordering the roti let me show you my potato trick well it's not a trick but tell me if you think it's weird or not. Right, you ready for this? Take your fork, crush the potato. Okay, spoon, sauce, onto the potato, crush. Okay, <laughs> baby food, right? Let's eat. If you haven't tried that, try it, because that is the only way to eat the potatoes. You can have that one for free. Whilst I finish this, I want you to head to the comments and tell me which is your favorite food court. Terminal 21, MBK, or Icon Siam. And if I've missed one, and if I've missed your favorite, let me know. Okay guys, if you are coming in from the BTS, you get off at Siam. And if you come into the shopping mall at that level, you want to come down one level to the basement floor. You come in on level M, and then you come down one level on the escalator, and you get into this food court. 
there are a couple of things down here which are quite interesting. First of all, you have this food area, food court area, which is full of brands. Actually, you probably recognize some of them, but there are some independent restaurants too. But this isn't really what we're here for. We're here for the Thai street food court, which is another section at the far end. You also have gourmet market here, which is like a supermarket, a premium supermarket, which again is very interesting to walk around and see some products that you don't normally see in the 7-Eleven. Good quality stuff in there, but not cheap. But yeah, have a look around this sort of like branded area. Anyway, there's cafes, there's coffees, there's, you can get drinks, there's noodle stuff, but you are gonna pay more than the Thai food court. But as I say today, we're here to check out the Thai street food court. Before we head over to the Thai street food court, actually, I think we'll get some Sai Ua or Northern Thai sausage. This was actually recommended by Gary, the Roman cook. I can't take credit for this one, but every time I come to Siam Paragon, I get 100 grams of this Sai Ua sausage because it is great and I recommend you do too. So we'll pick some up and we'll try it over at the street food court. So the cap, our Sai Ua cap, hot sip bat. Okay, we have it. 65 baht, which is pretty good price, I would say. Obviously, it's more than street food. They also have really good mu ping here, but I think I'll save the space. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, mu krob always calls me crispy pork. I mean, look how good. <laughs> look how good that looks. So, yeah, cow mu krob, crispy pork and rice. That could be a goer. Got another place here which is doing koi tod or fried oyster omelette. Sukuyaki, so different, different actually. You have a lot, a lot of options here. And all of these places, like the other shopping malls, everything is in English. Obviously, it's in Thai as well, but they always have an English and they always have a photo as well. So you kind of know what you're doing. Sweaty cap, you kind of know what you're getting. What's this place? Ah, uh, stewed pork. Another, another favorite of mine. I think if I'm choosing stewed pork or crispy pork, I'm choosing crispy pork every day. This is pork noodles. These are also apparently very good. So we'll, we'll have a think about them. But again, this, this makes me laugh all the time. These are not real. These are fake display. And actually they're really big in Japan. When I was in Japan, these are everywhere, but I've started to see them more and more now in Thailand. But just look at the big pan there, where I presume they're frying stuff off. This is cow gang which you have the selection of different curries. We see this all the time, obviously, selection of different curries. You have it with rice. They also look pretty damn good. Okay, first dish. I think I have to go for the cow moon crab, right? Cannot look that good and not eat it. What do you cow moon crab? Sorry? Normal, regular. Try a cup. So you have an option of regular or extra. Popcorn cup. Uh, regular is 90 baht and then extra is 110 baht obviously because we're gonna have a few dishes and try a few things I've just gone with regular Oh man, no Cannot believe how good that looks So yeah, we'll come with rice Some green chilies cucumber and then cow milk crab and an egg Chai cup, just on the side, please. Cup. Just get a little bit of this sauce as well to make it even more, well, not even more spicy, but so I don't think there's a huge amount of chili there. So we just take a little bit of that. We're gonna put it on the table. We're gonna get our second dish. Our and fine noodle cup. This one. I don't actually know how you see. That's the problem with not speaking that much Thai. I don't know how to say it. But we've gone with the Yentifau noodles. Or Yentifau noodles, sorry. Mix it up. I haven't had this in a while, actually. And all of the other dishes are fairly standard. So I thought I'd try this one and show, show you guys this one. Chai cap. Do you want spicy? Well, that's an easy answer. Of course. You try and kill me now. Kopkin <laughs> cap. All right, guys, before I taste, let me just give you a quick look at these. So, I have the cow mukrob. As I said, you've got the crispy, crispy pork. I mean, just look, <laughs> that crispy skin on top, the layer of fat below, which is rendered out nicely. And then the soft, juicy meat below, 
And look at, just look at the colour on the bottom. I mean, that pink looks so good. And then, yeah, rice, and you have this sauce, which looks quite nice actually. And some brown, maybe not sickly sweet, hopefully. We have half a boiled egg, a few cucumbers, as I said, to cut through it, and then some of those green chilies. It does come with a bit of soup, so pork broth. Which hopefully will be nice and flavorful. Just usually these things do come with a broth on the side, which is quite nice. And then I've got this like spicy acidic sauce with it. I'm not entirely sure. It may just be soy sauce and chili and a touch of vinegar. And then we have the Yentifo noodles and they look interesting right and I promise you it's not blood <laughs> as much as it looks like it it's not blood so do not be scared but in there we have fried tofu pork balls or fish balls we have some blood cake so yeah look out for that we have the crispy wonton we have those flat rice noodles and then you obviously have the broth and you've also got some morning gloria pack boom in there as well but these are interesting they are delicious slightly sweet so to go with that I've got a little bit of vinegar chili vinegar pick nam som to go with it and that will balance it out nicely for my palate so let's stop talking about it and let's try it. And of course, we've got acai ore as well, which we will taste, but we'll try that afterwards. Let's, let's start with the, let's start with the Yentifo. Okay, guys, Yentifo noodles. And I said that the pink didn't come from the blood and that's true. It actually comes from a fermented red bean paste, which makes it so pink, which has a unique flavor and just this amazing pink color. Mm, spicy. I asked him to make it ped mac and we had a little conversation off camera about whenever I ask for spicy, because I'm a Farang or a foreigner, people are like, yeah, he can't handle spicy. So they never actually make it as spicy as I like it and I always have to add more. Because I said that, he's obviously thrown it in. But what I love about these noodles is just the richness. It's normally made with a pork broth. So the pork bones are cooked and cooked and cooked for hours and you get this really rich, meaty broth when you add that fermented bean paste in, you get this rounded savory flavor. It's sweet, it's tangy, it's slightly sour, but if you've been watching my videos and I pretty much say it in every food video, you know I'm gonna add more because you definitely have a background sweetness on these noodles. And if you like that, that's great, but definitely a little bit of chili vinegar for me. So increasing the spice levels and just increasing that sourness. So let's get that mixed in. And oh, there's, looks like, there's definitely offal in here too. There's, I'm gonna say that's a bit of stomach. Mm. I love that soft, gelatinous. But 90 baht, and it's a pretty good portion to be honest. Get some of those noodles, you can see how pink those noodles have gone see-through pink noodle ribbon. Let's get some of them. Mm. Soft, nice texture. And you know, the noodles, they suck up a bit of that broth. And obviously that's why they're pink, they take on that color, but they suck up that tanginess and that sweetness and with the sourness, so they're pretty good. Pork ball. Mm. Tofu ball. Mm. If you haven't had fried tofu before, or even if you don't like tofu, fried tofu in a broth like this is a really good place to start because it, again, it sucks up those flavors and you have a nice crisp outside and a soft chewy inside. Mm. Some fatty pork. Actually, I've had these, not often, it's not really my go-to because of the sweetness really. And I know you can 
adapt it. And I do tend to prefer dry, dry noodle dishes to soup, soupy noodle dishes. <clears throat> but to be honest, this is as good as the ones I've had on the street. And it said Michelin Guide, so I know that doesn't always count for everything, but I think if you had this, it's a pretty good place to start. And there's so much in here, and actually, the more I dig, the more awful you find. So there's a, there's a bit of ear. <laughs> you have the blood cake, which I showed you before. I have slices of the stomach. So maybe if you are squeamish, don't try it. But if you're going to try it and try offal, maybe a soup like this is the way to go because the flavors are so strong. Not strong of the offal. What I mean is the richness of the broth is so strong that you're not getting that offaly flavor. You just get the nice rich flavor that comes from offal, but not the like, like when you first, it's an acquired taste basically. So maybe this is a good place to start. And I'm not shying away from it. Let's try some of that blood cake. Just, just to show you, I am actually eating the blood cake. So, see, I love it. If I, <laughs> if I blindfolded you, other than being arrested, <laughs> and I gave you some blood cake, you, wouldn't know, you would not know it's blood. I promise you, you would not know it's blood. It's got this soft texture. It's rich, of course, but there's no bitterness. There's no weird flavor to it. It just adds to the dish. It adds the richness to the dish. You, su you should try it. And the whole reason that I get these, crispy wonton. These dishes are all about texture. The soft noodles, the chewy textures in the offal, and the rich blood cake, the crisp on the outside of the fried tofu, and then that crunch of the wonton. If it counts for anything, I'm impressed by these. But what you're probably not impressed by are my chopstick skills, which are normally pretty good. But when I get these ones, I get these plastic ones or the metal round ones, I'm like an absolute amateur. <clears throat> and I know why they give them because they're easy to clean, but man, I struggle with these. Everything slips off them. <laughs> so yeah, apologies for that. But anyway, a few more of these noodles and we'll try to cow more crab. Okay, cow mu krob. And before I just get into this, I will say, actually, you know, it's half 10. This place opens at 10 o'clock and already it's starting to get a little busy. If you come at lunchtime, <laughs> it's going to be busy. If you come on the weekend, my God, this whole shopping center is absolutely rammed. So to be honest, I just don't even bother. It's just, it's just, it's just not worth it. I mean, I might come to the shops, but I'm not gonna come down here, it's absolutely packed. But if you get here early or mid-afternoon on a weekday, it's actually fine and it's quite, it's quite a nice atmosphere. There's a few people in here, there's plenty of tables available. But yeah, get here early, guys. Anyway, Kalmul Krob. I tried this sauce earlier and it is a touch sweet. Mm, nice and rich, but it does need to be cut through. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this sauce mix it in and it is thick <laughs> but no oh, that is better maybe a touch of that vinegar as well just to add in because look the crispy pork is fatty so having a bit of acidity to cut through is great that's why they give you the chili and the cucumber it cuts through the richness and portions aren't huge on this one but i've had this before and i know the the pork packs the flavor there you go, guys. First mouthful. Mm. It really is fantastic mukrob. Maybe not the best I've ever had, but really you can't complain. I mean, let's see if I can get this for you. Let's see if it can focus on the, 
more crab. No, it's jumping for my face. Stupid camera. Right. As you can see, the skin, you've got this thin layer of skin on top. And underneath that, as I said, the fat. But if you start to pull it apart, you can just see how stringy and how juicy it is and the fat in there. It's pork belly anyway, it's fatty. But the crunch of that skin, saltiness, and the meat is soft, but as you chew, there is a chew to it. In a pleasurable way it's soft, in a pleasurable way it's chewy, it's like in between. But as you chew, you've released that pork flavor and the richness, and you can taste, well, and therefore you can taste the quality of the pork, because the porkiness just comes out the more you chew. And that's why it is rich, and that's why you do need to cut through with a little bit of cucumber and a little bit of acidity too, but guys, this, this is pretty good. For a shopping mall food court, it's really not something to turn your nose up at. Mm. And yeah, the cucumber just cuts through. Get a nice freshness. Let's try a little bit of that broth. Mm. Slightly salty, but rich and porky. As I said, it's just nice to have that on the side. It's nice to have that little extra. They don't need to give you that. But I like that they do. And the sauce, you know what? That sauce, that thick, gloopy sauce. I say that in a nice way, by the way. It's okay. I don't know if it's just me. I don't think it's a bad version. But like for me, it kind of hides the flavor of the pork a little bit. It doesn't add to it. And I'd, to be honest, I'd rather just have it with a bit of the chili, the chili sauce or even just some pig bon or and the chili vinegar. And whilst the sauce is nice and rich, I'd kind of rather just have it in more crab, if I'm honest. And the rice. Let's see if the sai oa lives up. Well, I know it does, but let me show that to you guys. Okay, sai oa. And it looks pretty good. I mean, normally they're grilled on coals, right? But in here, it's just grilled on a hot plate, so. I haven't actually had this for a few months, so it'll be interesting to remind myself of, does it still have that smoky flavor? It also comes with a bag of raw cabbage, which, well, it's just cabbage. I don't really need to show you what that looks like, but uh, again, this nice like contrast between spicy, fragrant sausage and fresh crunch of the cabbage. So if you don't know what Sai Oa is, Sai Oa is Northern Thai sausage. Normally get it around Chiang Mai, north of Thailand. Usually made from pork. It's got lemongrass, it's got chili, it's got uh, coriander root in there, uh, lime leaves sometimes, shallots. So it's incredibly fragrant, incredibly delicious. It's one of my favorite things. Let's see. Mm. Straight away, you get that lemongrass limely pit. Mainly lemon dust to be fair, but that fragrance, the flavor that actually just reminds me of being in this part of the world. And then later on comes the porkiness and then the chili, the spiciness starts coming through in the end. And I think a good site or one needs to be spicy. So let's do it with the chase of the cabbage. Mm. As I said, the cabbage adds a freshness but actually there's a really nice natural sweetness to cabbage. Sweetness in a good way, may I add, because it is a natural sweetness that comes through the cabbage and it balances out that spicy sausage really nicely. Slightly salty, spicy sausage. It doesn't have, of course, it doesn't have the smoky flavor that you get when you cook it on the grill, but it still has a nice grilled flavor and it makes up for that in the quality, I would say. That you don't miss that smoky charred flavor as much because the quality is so good. And that's 65 baht, although they actually charged me 60 baht, but the, the price said 65 baht. And I did tell them, and they said, no, 60 baht is fine. So maybe you'll be lucky on that five baht like me. But that's 65 baht for 100 grams. 
in here it's pretty good, I would say. It wor it's worth it. The value is there. So shout out to Gary, the Roman cook, who recommended this one to me. And if you know who he is, great. And if you don't, get over to his channel, the Roman cook, and subscribe and follow for him. For me, I think that will be the end of this video. Street food is not scary. And if you are worried about eating street food, come here, come to one of the other shopping malls, eat in their food court, understand what you like, understand what it looks like, and then get out on the street and eat the street food. Because whilst this is good, the street food is great. So make sure you do that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.